Hey everybody, this is Kellen. I got another devotional for you uh, today. And this last month we've been talking about being people after God's own heart. And again, it comes from the story of David when the Bible talks about him as being a man after God's own heart, even though he made so many mistakes. Um, and I think it gives us a lot of, a lot of hope that even in our, in our fault, fallen state, we can still be people after God's own heart. And today I want to talk about living in freedom. Because uh, I think freedom is just uh, being people who feel free to live the way that God has called us to. It's, uh, there's not much better than that. You know, I was thinking, uh, what is like the worst thing that could possibly happen to me in my life? And I don't know about you if you've thought through this, but to me, it, I think it would be being falsely not only accused, but convicted of a crime and being sent to jail. Like, I can't imagine uh, losing my freedom in that way. And all of a sudden, you know, having every, every, I can do whatever I want, and all of a sudden now I'm in a jail cell for not having even done the thing that I'm accused of doing. Uh, it'd just be awful. I was reading a story about a guy named Will, William Dillon who uh, was falsely accused but actually convicted of a murder that, that he didn't commit. And after 27 years in prison, he was finally found um, through DNA evidence to be, he was acquitted. He was found that he, he was not guilty. And uh, the state of Florida actually awarded him like $1.35 million for his 27 years that were in prison. And that sounds like, oh man, he won the lottery. He was in prison for 27 years, lost his freedom. Uh, like, dude deserved that money, you know? Um, but I, I just can't imagine how bad it would be to lose freedom like that. Uh, but you know, sometimes we feel as Christians like God restricts us. And he takes away some of our freedoms. We can't, we can't do this. We can't do that. Um, and I know especially with young people in particular, that's a, a frustration. Like, why, why wouldn't God let me, let me have fun in life? Whatever. Um, but I was listening to Timothy Keller, a uh, pastor who I really uh, love listening to the other day. And he, he said, freedom is not so much the absence of restrictions as it is finding the right ones. Those that fit with the realities of our own nature and those of the world. You know, what he's saying there is we're not free because we don't have restrictions. We become free in part because those restrictions are the things that make life better. You know, think about sports. If you were playing a football game or a basketball game and there were no rules, okay, you'd be free from restrictions, but it would not be a free game. Like, nothing good would take place because everybody would just be following the heck out of each other. We need certain restrictions in life to make the best of this life that we possibly can. And sometimes we just, we really lose sight of that. Um, part of freedom in Christ is abiding by some of the restrictions that he puts in place, which are meant for our health. And it talks about in Romans 6, 6, for we know that our old self was crucified with Jesus so that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. You know, we try to live our lives without restrictions and what happens is we actually do become slaves to sin. If we're not following this, uh, this whatever from a higher being that's telling us the, the way that we should live our life best, all of a sudden we become slaves to sin. And somewhere in the midst of our li lives, we need to submit and give up what we think are our freedoms for a life that's even more free. Because I tell you what, living in, in, in slavery to sin, it is the worst kind of, of jail that we can put ourselves in. But living for Jesus is a freedom, even though, yes, it might restrict you. You might not be able, you might not do some of the things that you would do otherwise if you weren't following Jesus. Um, it might restrict you per se, but it actually gives life and it gives freedom to live this life in a way that, that is so much more rewarding. You know, and Paul talks about in Romans 7, Man, I want to do certain things right, but it seems like every time I try, I can't do them. Who is going to save me from this? And at the end he says, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. In other words, uh, like when I'm trying to do right and I can't do it, the, the only hope I have is in Jesus. Real freedom that brings me joy and the life that I, that I really want to see have happen in my life, it only comes through Jesus. And so we have to get to that place where where we commit ourselves to Christ. Um, and only in that are we gonna choose to follow His way rather than try to give ourselves as much pleasure in life as we possibly can. And again, while it might seem restricting, it's the ultimate freeing thing. Um, 
If you're gonna live life the right way, we gotta choose Christ. But it got, it's gotta go beyond that. We have to choose to be a slave to Jesus rather than a slave to this ever-present sinful nature that we have in our hearts. And we have to choose being a slave to Jesus each and every moment of the day. And now even that, we're gonna mess up. We're gonna fail. We're not gonna make the right choice. But here's what it comes down to. We ultimately have the choice. We can live in bondage to sin, or we can say, you know what? I follow Jesus each and every moment. You know, I, I, I might struggle with cussing and saying stuff out of anger um, and, and say that I, I, I was like, I have no choice. I just do it. But we do. We have a choice. And the real freedom comes when we choose to follow the way that Jesus calls us to each and every day. Um, and so I want to just connect this to, to Jesus in, in the last few seconds here. You know, I think... Jesus himself let go of his own identity as God when he became man. He, he essentially took on the restrictions of humanity. Even though Jesus was God, he took on the restrictions of humanity for your sake and my sake. You know, and, and I think all he's asking us to do is, hey, take on some of the restrictions I'm asking from you and see how much better your life is going to be. Uh, his restrictions are meant to protect us to give us the best life that we possibly could have in Jesus. And living in submission to God's rules, it will give us a freedom that living however we want will always fail to achieve. And so today, that's what I want you to think about, you know, um, living in, mor in, in a moral life with integrity and character and love for others. It, it's not meant to, to restrict us. It's meant to, to put us in the best place possible to live the best life that Jesus calls us to. So let's do that today. Why don't we pray? Lord, thank you so much for, for the, the great rules and restrictions you put on us to, to live this life the way that you call us to. Uh, God, when our life seems to be spiraling out of control, I know for me it's, it's when I'm choosing to walk away from some of the things that you're calling me and, and ways that you're calling me to live. And I put myself into my own little box and my own little prison. God, let me live in complete freedom today by choosing to follow your way for my life. Lord, I pray that for every single one of us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thanks everybody. Hope you have a great week and we'll see you next time.